I've been a car builder for many years. I spent a lot of time in the military. I did survival. But the reality is, is what's been in my heart for years is to have a farm. As things have sort of devolved in our society over the last few years with this global pandemic, with supply chain shortages, it, it's really taken what I wanted to do into something that I felt like I had to do. I've been haunting Hampton Roads for self-sufficiency items, and they're actually really hard to find here. Look, uh, the ability to get food, the ability to, it's vehicles. We build off-grid vehicles. So, so we'll still build Camaros, Mustangs, and Mopars, but we also build FJs and pickup trucks and, and, and swamp buggies and off-grid RVs. So we've got a metal shop that we're using less and less of these days, and I've combined the metal and the body shop into one room. That gave me 7,000 square feet of space that is perfect for setting up an off-grid store. I think Dan has lost his mind with this new idea for this store and off-grid vehicles. In 20 years, people are going to want the ability to survive in their vehicle, and I think that's really important. I think they're going to want badass Chevelles and Camaros. We're going to build those too, but what if we build badass Chevelles and Camaros and in that metal shop, we also build off-grid vehicles? Ken, I need your support on this. I really do. Dan has done the entire design of Phantom Works and it came out really nice, so I think he just needs to put the same thing into this new store, paint, figure something out, but it's got to change. If you're gonna do something this ridiculous, you can't do it in a metal shop. What do you mean I'm not gonna do it in the metal shop? It's the perfect space, it's 7,000 square feet. Yeah, but it looks like a metal Oh, 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 no, no. We're gonna remodel everything. Just bricks and car signs on the walls aren't really going to be sort of uh, conducive to off-grid survival, camping, uh, things like that. So it's time to do a little bit of artwork. A friend of a friend gave me a phone number of an artist that supposedly knows what she's doing. All right, so what do you want up here? Fairies and yeah, yeah, rainbows? No, no. So you notice you've got a couple bands. You've got sort of a brown band and a green band and a blue area. All I was doing there was creating background, right? And, and, and I see big grade, big, big pieces of grass, like to the ceiling kind of thing. Okay. And then bugs. Things that would kill you. I haven't been spray painting that long. Actually, this is the first time I've ever spray painted a mural. Other than leaving you alone in a dark room, what do you need me to do? Um, just the key to the lift. That's it. I'll go get it. I kind of visually can see where it will go, and I can see my design mentally executed. So I was just like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. I got a phone call from Dan and he said that he needed a mural painted in his auto body shop, but it was for a new project of his, and it was unlike any other mural I have ever painted or even thought to paint, and he wanted this painted on a massive, like 60 foot long wall, 24 feet high, and I, this is cool. I, I like the idea. I'm down. The scales on the snake are probably my favorite thing. My goal was to just master the skill of painting and find a way to do it as my living because I didn't want to do anything else. My job, it's not a job. I get to play every day, so it's great. Erica comes in and she's not what I was expecting. Number one, this girl looks like she's doing 100 miles an hour just sitting still. He told me the backstory of what the space is going to be. The theme of the room is nature is bigger and scarier than you think. And the whole concept is to remind people that if they are facing nature alone, they better be prepared because there's scary things that they're gonna have to deal with. Larger than life size, killer bugs, insects, snakes, like the creepiest insects type mural you could ever imagine. Holding a button down, literally, for 10, 14 hours of the day, I have killer forearms now. It's going great. So, you know, I, I had fun with Dan. I, I kind of pulled some stuff on him. So I did a thing on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you did a thing on the wall, what does that I mean? I did, I didn't pee on it, but I, I added something to the design, I think you're gonna like it. What is that? Is it a different bug than we talked about? Or? So I put you riding a unicorn 
and it's like hovering over the snake head. Let's go, do you want to see it? I think you're, you're gonna really you're like just, it. You're just like, you're jerking my chain, right? No, no. You did I, that on the, on the mural. Unicorns are deadly. Unicorns yeah. are stupid. I'm not sure that it's, you know, I don't judge a, a, a book by its cover thing, so I'm gonna let her go, but um, I don't know. I went for the creepiest insects and snakes I could find. So I went for scorpions, spy. I think I initially had a tarantula on there, and he said, no, I want a black widow because those cause death. Um, so tarantulas don't kill you, so we wanted to go for lethal insects. Um, I threw in a praying mantis because the females kill their mates after they mate with them, so I thought that was gory enough for him. And I wanted to think of the biggest, scariest snake you could imagine, and that would be a python. So um, that was in, initially in the design. He liked it, loved it, and then he said, well, can we throw in a killer hornet too? So sure, we, we can add a little killer hornet up in the corner for you. So Dan is coming in today to take delivery of the off-grid mural. Feels great to be done. I love the turnout. I'm very pleased. Let's see if he likes it. I'm ready to see my vision in full color. So, did I do okay? No. You did exactly what was in my head. Only better because, you know, you, you think of something, but until you see it. So, yeah, that's amazing. I knew it was like, it's in the bag. He likes it. He's happy. So by the end of it, I think he was very pleased. All right, so I see lots of cool stuff, but I do not see me on a unicorn. I usually put something hidden in every piece, so you just have to crap. find it. I don't know if you realize it, but that's my metaphor for a lot of my clients, is that when they come in, I say, hey, look, if you want to jump on a unicorn and start searching for the rainbow, <laughs> you're not for me. <laughs> so, this is perfect. So, the snake's probably my favorite. I've never spray painted an entire mural. This is the first mural I think I've ever used like 99% spray paint. Okay, wow, that's, that's amazing. Now, that wasp. Killer hornet. A killer hornet. Not a wasp, that's like sissy stuff. Okay, so, killer hornet. so is that really a lethal? I mean, I don't know if it'll kill you, but I've seen them um, on images and they are like that big. I wonder who would win between a praying mantis and a black widow? I think the praying mantis will win. You, it, it, it's like you read my mind and you put it on the wall. I'm blown away. I, I want to hire her here and see if she can turn her art into stuff that we can do on cars because she captured exactly what I was looking for. So, we've got the mural, we've got the walls. Now I need your help. Let's go set up a shop because that's what we really needed. Oh. So you want me to move yeah, yeah. stuff in now? You can help out. Okay, I have nothing else to do.